Hi everybody, welcome to today's practice. I'm Demetra and Brandon is going to be demoing for us today. I'm going to step off the camera so the focus can be on him. So for any point throughout the practice, if you're not sure about what to do, you can just look to him and uh, always take time to pause if you need and take any options that you need. So listen to your body today. I'm facilitating, but you're the true teacher. All right, so we'll begin today standing in Samastutihi. Close your eyes and start to bring some awareness into your breath. Noticing here what's going on in your stance. Start to bring awareness into your feet and ground yourself through all corners of your feet, feeling really stable in your stance, feeling the earth holding you up, and then drawing your energy up to lift all through your strong standing legs, your spine, and lifting through the crown of your head. Do a quick little body scan and just notice if there's anywhere that you're holding tension and just see if you can release the grip. Throughout this practice, we'll do our best to move with our breath. So if you feel that you're losing your gentle breathing pattern. You wanna keep long inhales and exhales. Just slow it down a little bit and reconnect back. On your next inhale, raise your arms up either in front or beside you, drawing them up towards the sky. You can gaze towards the fingertips and then exhale your heart, arms back through heart center to your sides. Moving with your breath, we'll do that again. Raise your arms up, gaze towards the fingers, shoulders down and relaxed. And then exhale, draw your arms back by your sides. This time, inhale your arms up. And exhale, bend your knees, fold over your legs and fold forward. Take a few breaths here to just release your neck. Keep a soft bend in your knees if that feels good. Grab on the opposite elbows. Hands can be on the shins. Doesn't matter how far, far you fold over this morning. Just starting to feel a little bit of release in the spine. On your next inhale, slight bend in the knees, we'll rise all the way back up to standing. Arms raise overhead, and then the hands can come through heart center. Inhale, raise your arms back up towards the sky, and exhale, fold over your legs. This time, plant your hands and step back so that you're in a plank position. Right away, waking up that core, engaging the lower abdominals and drawing the belly in. If you'd like to bring your knees down to the mat, that's always an option. And then take some time here to just feel what's going on in your body. Maybe move side to side, get those wrists nice and warmed up. And then exhale, lower your body all the way down to the mat. You can either keep your hands here and just lift your chest lightly for low cobra, or you can place your forearms down on the mat, lift your heart through, shoulders are broad, necks in line for sphinx. Take a couple breaths here and just connect back with that breath. Feeling the pelvis draw into the floor, legs are strong. A little bit of back strengthening here. Bring your hands back to your sides. 
and then either pressing straight up and coming into down dog or moving through a child's pose or a tabletop position and then press back into a downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. So your hands plant firmly into the mat, thumbs and index fingers are rooted, arms are strong, eyes of the elbows roll up so your shoulders can spread, and then lengthen through the spine, draw your sit bones high to the sky, and work to drop your heels towards the mat. Take a few breaths in this first down dog. Take any movement that you need. You can pedal the legs out, move the hips around a little bit, and then take a couple breaths in stillness. Working to draw the navel towards the spine. Uddiyana Bandha, Mula Bandha, pelvic floor lift. And find your breath. If nothing else, just come back to that long inhale and exhale, using the breath to calm the mind. Exhale all your air out fully, and then slowly walk your feet up between your hands. Once you get to the top, lengthen your spine long, neck in line. And then exhale, fold forward over your legs and release. Inhale, bend your knees, rise all the way up to standing, arms come above your head. And exhale, your arms by your sides. Do another Surya Namaskar a little bit faster. So on your inhale, raise your arms up, shoulders down and relaxed. Exhale, fold over strong legs. Inhale, lengthen your spine, and exhale, plant your hands and step back, and then lower knees or keep the knees high, lower down. Inhale, rise up, either low cobra sphinx or upward facing dog, and then tuck the toes, exhale, press back to downward facing dog. Stay for three breaths here. Using that same kind of checklist, making sure your arms are nice and strong, your hands rooted, heels reaching towards the ground, but they don't need to touch. Spine is long. Gaze here can be towards the navel. And breath is even. One more breath and then release your air fully and find yourself back at the top of your mat. Inhale to lengthen your spine long and then exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, root to rise, come all the way up and exhale your hands through heart center. Close your eyes and check back in in Samastiti He. Notice any subtle changes in the body or the mind. And then exhale lower into a chair pose. So squatting down, hips come back, arms lift. So hands are above your heart. Hold here for a breath. And then exhale lower down, plant your hands, inhale to extend the spine, and then exhale, plant the hands and step back into a high or low plank. Lower down through your chaturanga, whatever that looks like for you. Inhale, upward facing dog, if that's the option you're taking. And then tuck the toes, exhale, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, bring your right foot forward between your hands and keep the back foot so that you're in a lunge position. On your next inhale, rise up to a high lunge. We'll hold here for three breaths. 
So draw that right hip back in space so it's even with the left. You can have a slight bend in your left leg to align your hips and then work towards straightening that back left leg. Energy is coming down through strong legs, but then lifting up through your arms, shoulders are down and relaxed. On your next exhale, you can plant your left foot at a perpendicular angle and open up to warrior two. So three to five breaths here, depending on how quickly you're breathing. Opening up to the left side. So your shoulders are drawing open to the side. Pelvis is opening up to the side. And that front knee is just over the right ankle. Notice if your upper body is drawing forward and see if you can bring your uh, rib cage right over top of your hips. On your next exhale, drop your left hand down your back leg and raise your right arm up for Peaceful Warrior. Keep sinking into that right leg. You can take a moment to straighten if it's really burning, but push through that discomfort. You've got it. Lengthen through the right body. Notice if you're collapsing in the back body. And then exhale, spiral your arms down, windmill them all the way to the ground. Step back into a plank and then lower down, moving through your vinyasa. Inhaling to rise, collarbones broad. Tuck the toes, press back, exhale for downward facing dog. One breath, and then on your inhale, move your left foot between your hands. Keep the right back heel lifted and rise up into a high lunge. Three, three to five breaths here, this time drawing the left hip back in space. Even your hips out. Come back to your breathing. Draw your low ribs in so they're not flaring out. See if you can soften your face, soften your palate just a touch. And when you're ready, you'll turn your right toes out to the side and then open up the arms and the hips to warrior two, Virabhadrasana B. Your shoulders are stacking over your rib cage. Rib cage is right over your hips. The legs are strong. Draw your belly in, really feeling that engagement in the lower abdominals. Soft face. On your next exhale, drop the right arm towards the back leg. Lift your left arm up and find a gentle back bend for a peaceful warrior here. Nice line of energy coming up through those top fingers, strong legs, bend a little bit more into that bent knee. And then exhale, windmill your arms back down to the mat. Lift the leg up and through to come back to a plank and then high or low. Exhale down and inhale up. Exhale, tuck the toes, press back, downward facing dog for three. Nice steady breaths here. Reconnecting if we've lost that. Making sure we're trying to Use the breath to guide the movement. It's always an option to have a little bit of a bend in your knees, in the stand dog. 
Really listen to what your body is asking for today. This time when you're ready, walk, step, or jump. Your feet between your hands. Lower your hips down and raise your arms up. Utkatasana. Give our legs a moment of rest. Come back to standing at Samastitihi. Take a breath. Shake the legs out if you'd like. And then inhale. Lower the hips. Raise your arms back up. Moving into Utkatasana once more. This time bring your hands to heart center. And then use your core to help you twist over to the left side. So your left elbow comes on the outside of your right knee, twisting over to the right side. So lengthen the spine, hips drop low. Notice if your knees, one's coming in front of the other. You can just peek at them, realign them if you have to. And then use your gaze to help you twist a little bit more. One more breath. And exhale, fold over your legs. You can find your hands on the mat or the sh your shins. Wiggle them out a little bit. And then sit the hips back low. Rise up, hands come to heart center. And use your exhale to twist over to the left side. So right elbow is coming onto the left knee. Open up to the side. Try here to use your core, your abdominal muscles to help with the twist. You don't want to just reef on your spine with your arm, but it can definitely help encourage a little bit more of a twist. Might start to feel your body warm, heat rising. Exhale, release, plant your hands, shake your legs out, and then we'll rise all the way back up. You can cycle with your arms, raise them up, and pass them through heart center, meeting back in Samastitihi Mountain Pose. One breath. On your inhale, raise your arms up. And then exhale, fold over your legs. Plant your hands down on the mat and step your left foot back and drop that left knee down so you're in a low lunge. Lift through your heart, draw the shoulders down and back. And then your right arm will reach behind you to grab onto your left foot anywhere you can. If it's not available to you, that's okay. You can just use your the strength in your hamstring to draw your left heel up towards your buttocks. If you do have the foot, you can just gently pull it nice and close into you for a quad stretch. Or if it's not available, you can just drop the hips low into this low lunge. One more breath here. Release the leg. Keep the left hand planted on the mat and either staying in a low lunge or coming to a high lunge, we'll raise the right arm up to the sky for a twist here. Strength through that back heel. The knee is right over top of the ankle, the right foot. Exhale, and plant your hand down. Open your back foot out so that it's in that warrior two position perpendicular. And then rise up to warrior two. We'll tuck the right toes in, moving into a wide-legged forward fold. So toes slightly inward, 
Find length in your spine and then exhale, fold over your legs. So a small little micro bend in the knees if you have hyperextension. Lengthening through the crown of the head. Hands can be either on your hips or onto the ground for this first uh, Prasarita Padottanasana. Here for two more breaths. See if you can draw some of the weight a little bit more forward, coming into the balls of your feet so that your hips are rising right up to the sky. And on your next inhale, come up halfway. Hold for a breath using that strong core to hold you up. And then rise all the way up. This time tuck your, or sorry, uh, turn your left toes to the back of the mat and come into a warrior two facing the back of the mat. And bring your arms down to the floor, untuck that right back foot and we'll lower down for a low lunge on this side. So right knee is onto the mat, you can untuck the toes. And then if you want to either sink into this low lunge or move into that quad stretch. So if you're doing a quad stretch, you can raise your right leg up towards your glutes and then use the left hand to grab anywhere that's available on that left leg. Sinking the hips forward, drawing that right heel in a little bit closer to you and coming back to your breath. Try and relax your shoulders here. Hold for another breath or two. And when you're ready, you can slowly release that leg down. Keep the right hand planted and either low or this time tucking the toes for high lunge. If you did it on the other side, we'll open up to the left. So left arm rising up to the sky. Legs are strong and stable here. Engage your core, draw your navel in. And you, you can turn your gaze towards the left fingertips if that feels okay on the neck. One more breath here. You're doing amazing. Plant your left hand down on the mat. Turn the right toes so they're in perpendicular. And then we'll ride up warrior two. And then turn the left toes in. So heels are out, toes are slightly facing in, and then we'll fold forward for another wide-legged forward fold. This time, if you'd like, you can clasp your hands behind your back and draw your hands up over your head. Neck here can be relaxed. Legs are strong. Slight bend in those knees. Last breath here. On your next inhale, you can bring your hands to your hips, rise halfway up and hold, and then use that strong core to lift you back up to standing. Turn your right toes towards the front of the mat, and then step back up to the top. Samastitihi. Take a breath or two here. Sometimes it's nice to move a little bit slowly just to notice the difference in our body from these movements. If there is any movements that you're really craving, you can take it, but notice what happens if you 
Resist that urge to fix your shirt or your hair. On your next inhale, raise your arms up above your head, gaze towards the fingers, and then exhale, fold over your legs. Plant your hands down and then lift your left foot just off the ground and root your right foot. We're going to move into a warrior three. So bring your hands towards heart center and then press your left heel back in space. And it doesn't have to come high off the ground. It can just be toes just off the ground. Or if you'd like, you can do as Brandon's doing here and square your hips Press the energy out through that left back heel and it's also coming out through the crown of your head. Hold for another breath or two, you got this. And then welcome that fold, lift the left leg high, coming into a standing splits here. So the hands come down, you can either keep your hips square and just keep that warrior three leg or you can open the hips up and find your version of a standing split again it does not matter how high that leg comes just work to lift it a little bit higher with each breath if you want to play with balance you can bring your right hand to your right calf Maybe you'll bring both hands off the mat and just feel those shakes, welcome them. Or if you'd like, you can play with kicking up into a handstand. If you have the space and you have it in your practice, you know how to follow it safely. Another breath or two for whatever, whatever option you're taking. Lift a little bit higher, find that maximal range of motion, and then exhale the left leg back down. You can take a little squat here or shake out the legs, whatever feels natural here. Reconnect with your breath. See if you can slow it down just a touch. And then hands come back to the mat. This time we're rooting into the left leg. Slowly play with lifting your right foot off the ground. And then when you feel stable, moving nice and slowly, you'll lift your hands off the mat, bring them to heart center, and then see how much you can lift that right foot off the mat. Maybe it's just a touch and that's awesome. If it is a challenge for you today, that's just perfect. Pressing out through the back right heel, nice and stable in that left leg. And then energy comes out through the crown of the head, shoulders draw down and back. Core is strong, hips can be even here. Hold for one more breath. I know it's burning. You're doing amazing. And then exhale, plant your hands down, either keeping the hips square or opening them up for a standing split. We'll have a few breaths here again to play with whatever option interests you today, either practicing balance by taking one hand off or maybe both. Or if you'd like to play with little kick-ups, you can attempt to kick up to handstand. No option is better than the other. So just play with what your body is asking for. Well, what are you cra craving today? And what is actually most suiting for your needs? Rockstar Brandon here. That's awesome. Another breath or two, no need to rush. 
find ourselves when you're ready back in a forward fold to shake your legs out if it felt good to do a little squat you can take that and then whenever you're ready we'll meet in child's pose so knees on the mat your hips will draw back onto your heels and your arms can come out in front of you or if you'd like to wrap them around your back just slow the breath, calm the mind. See if you can cultivate a little bit of patience for yourself with your own expectations or desires. Just notice whatever judgments you have or comparisons you might bring to the practice and just see how much you can let it go here. All that matters is that you do the work, you honor your body. See if you can shift that into just a little bit of gratitude for the fact that you are able-bodied and you're capable. Whenever you're ready, if you'd like to stay here a bit longer, you can. But we'll meet in Down Dog. And you can plant your hands on the mat, tuck your toes, and press your hips back, lifting up. On your inhale, raise your right foot up to the sky, and then exhale, bring it forward. The right knee will come just behind the right wrist, uh, ankle just behind the left wrist, and we're moving into a pigeon pose here. So take your time to get into this posture. We'll be here for 10 or so breaths. So just play with whatever your hip is asking for, your knee is asking for. I'd like to start by lifting through the heart and then you can fold forward like Brandon has done here. If this option of pigeon isn't working for you today, you can take a double pigeon sitting onto your bum and crossing your left leg over top of your right. Or you can just do a um, seated figure four with your legs. Just want to get into the hip here a little bit. Noticing what this sensation brings up and just being with it, using the breath to calm the system. You might notice that as you stay here, you're able to sink a little bit deeper. Another couple breaths. And staying here if you'd like. Or when you're ready, you can press your hands into the mat, lift your chest, tuck the back toes, and then lift your right leg up, press it back, and just cycle either through a down dog, or if you'd like to do it in vinyasa, you can come forward to plank, lower your chest down, rising up on your inhale, upward facing dog, tuck the toes, we'll meet back and downward facing dog, and then inhale your left leg up to the sky, and draw the left knee in towards your nose, and then drop that knee over behind the left wrist, left ankle just behind the right wrist find the length through the spine and as slow or as quickly as your body is ready you can fold forward 
over that left bend knee. Making whatever adjustments you need to make, but working to find stillness in each posture for at least a few breaths. Notice if you totally let go engagement of that back leg or your low belly and just cultivate a little bit of strength there. We don't want just total passive flexibility because that can be dangerous. We want to have mobility, strength and flexibility. Relax the shoulders, relax the neck, you cradle your head or rest it on the mat. Staying for a few more breaths. Again, if it's feeling really juicy and you want to stay here, you can. When you're ready, plant your hands and then make your way back into a downward facing dog. Take a moment to pedal the legs out. Maybe take any movements with the leg and the hip if your body's begging you for it. And then either doing a jump through if you know what that is or walking the feet forward, crossing the legs, sitting down, and we'll come into Dandasana staff pose. So legs out in front of you, hands by your hips. Engage the legs, pressing the heels into the ground and lift through the chest. Strength in the lower abdominals here. And then exhale, fold over your legs for Paschimottanasana. So wherever your hands land, if it's on your shins, if it's by your knees, maybe grabbing peace fingers around your big toes or right around your feet. Lengthen your spine, long heart leads the motion as you fold forward over strong legs. Careful not to pull on the legs here. Always an option to have a slight bend in the knees. See if you can pull your heart forward and through a little bit more to take out some of the rounding in your back. Another three to five breaths here. Release the neck. We're working to find comfort and stillness in each posture. So as much as you might be working, you want to release in the areas where you don't need to hold tension. And keep strength in those areas to protect yourself. On your inhale, rise up. And then draw your right foot in towards your groin so that your right foot is pressing into the left inner thigh. You can slightly twist your body over towards that straight left leg and then fold forward for Janu Shirshasana. If you're craving something a little bit different, there's always an option to plant the left hand on the inside of the leg and open up for a little bit of a twist, right arm coming over your side body, 
Brian's doing a classic Johnny Shirtasana here. Just a couple breaths here. On your next inhale, rise up. You can switch your legs. So right leg comes long, left foot plants on the inside of the right inner thigh. Gently encourage the spine over towards that right leg and then fold forward, keeping that right leg strong. Same as we did in Paschimottanasana, you're drawing the heart forward to try and take some of the rounding out of the spine and then folding forward over that right leg. So we started to slow the practice down a little bit. If you're really enjoying this pace and you want to keep with that, then just go um, and take a moment to just sit up in a Dandasana type posture. On your next inhale, we'll rise up. You can straighten both legs. If you'd like, you can draw your legs in optional vinyasa here. So if you are taking the vinyasa, apply your hands and step back, lower down on your inhale, and press back to downward facing dog on your exhale. We'll meet back into dandasana position, legs come forward, and then draw your right foot in towards your hip. A little bit of a space here. On your inhale, raise your right arm up and then bring it behind you to help support your spine. Left arm can come over the right leg. A little stop sign position here for Marichyasana C or a modified version of it. So the right hand is planting behind you, help support your back. Left arm is encouraging the twist, twisting from above the navel and using our core to do most of that action. Another breath or two here, making sure we don't lose that nice deep breathing in the twist. And exhale, you can release unwind maybe take a little counter twist if that feels good and then lengthen the right leg long draw the left foot in plant the foot down on the mat and then left arm can come behind you right arm comes up elbow can press on the outside of the left knee to help encourage the twist on the other side Gaze can come over your left shoulder. Try here to still find the length in your spine, lifting through the crown and exhaling a little bit more into the posture, into that twist. One more breath. Exhale, release, little counter twist. And then same thing, if you'd like to just stay in that Vindasana or come into Navasana early, or if you'd like to do a Vinyasa, got a lot of options here. Brandon's taking the option to jump back, move through down dog and then walking or jumping through the legs will all meet in Navasana. So weight can draw back. Maybe start with your legs bent. If it feels good, you can straighten those legs. Lift the arms to shoulder height. Point the toes. 
bring your heart through and notice where the engagement is if it's all in your hip flexors or quads see if you can lower a little bit more and try and get the work into your lower abdomen boat pose another breath or two you got it plant your hands next to your hips cross your legs and encourage your hips and your feet off the mat for a moment or two and then place your hips back down we'll move into another one either regular navasana or if you'd like to challenge yourself and slowly lower down to boat bo low boat you can try that another breath or two wherever you are and then we'll all lift up back to high boat cross the legs plant the hands lean forward to lift the heels and the hips off the mat and last one we'll hold for three to five nice deep breaths shoulders down and back legs are strong soften your face and then when you are ready slowly slowly lower all the way down to the mat option again to take the vinyasa if you really want to keep that heat or just lower and relax all the way down to the mat you can keep your legs bent here your feet placed on the mat if it feels good you can do as brennan's doing and shake the hips up and then find your feet planted on the mat just far enough away that you can graze your heels with your fingertips feet are hip distance apart and then inhale and press into your feet draw your hips up to the sky moving into a bridge pose so strong legs here hamstrings are on glutes can release a little bit pressing your elbows down into the mat if you'd like you can interlace your hands behind your back here tuck the shoulders under and press a little bit more through the hips imagine there's a block between your knees and just gently squeeze it holding for another breath or two we're going to do two bridges here if you'd like to just hold for a long bridge you can challenge yourself there maybe lifting one leg and the other otherwise lower down release the back maybe wiggle the hips around and then when you're ready we'll press into a final bridge so hips rise maybe this time you clasp your hands behind your back if you didn't last time if your back feels warm and you really want to take a wheel, you can. We haven't done a ton of back uh, opening postures here though, so listen to your body. Hold for another breath or two. And then whenever you're ready, we'll lower our hips down. Hug the legs in give yourself a squeeze and maybe rock a little bit side to side massage out the spine all right we're going to finish off by coming into an inversion so you can lower your legs down keep your back on the mat option here is to do headstand if it's in your practice and you feel comfortable doing that on your own. Otherwise, we'll do legs up, just lifting the legs right up above your hips and staying here, or a shoulder stand. So for shoulder stand, you can bend your knees, bringing your feet towards your face. Use the rock of your back to lift your hips over top of your shoulders and then plant your hands on your mid 
back to help support you in bringing your legs up. So here you're stacking your heels over your hips, hips over your shoulders. Arms are there to support. Try not to look around here and leave a little bit of space for your neck. So you don't want to collapse in your neck. Legs are spiraling together. Abdomen is drawn in and strong here. A few more breaths. Just letting some of those toxins release. Inversions are really great for our system. Just let everything drain and reverse. If it feels stressful, maybe just come onto the posture. They should help to calm our nervous system. Either staying in shoulder stand or headstand. If you've been in headstand, you can come down and do a rabbit pose or a child's pose. And then shoulder stand if you'd like to bring your toes down behind you for halasana. That's an option. So the toes can reach towards the mat. They don't have to touch. If they do touch, you can bring the tops of your feet down to the mat. Keep supporting your low back with your hands. And then whenever you're ready, really nice and slowly with attention, with care, bring one vertebrae back to the mat at a time and lower down. Lower your legs all the way down. Bring your hands by your side and actually tuck them. So palms face down on the mat. You can tuck them just under your glutes and then lift up through your uh, forearms so your elbows are supporting you. We're going to move into a fish, fish posture here, Matsyasana. So lifting up through the chest, forearms are on the mat. You can draw your head back towards the mat and just release your neck. Find a nice rainbow-like curve in your spine here. Coming back to that breath. And then exhale whenever you're ready, releasing down to the mat. And draw your knees into your chest and either uh, keep your knees together, drop them over to the right side, or if you'd like to cross right leg over left and then drop the knees over to the right side, moving into a gentle supine twist. So the knees, whether they're crossed or not, come over to the right. The left shoulder is drawing towards the mat. Gaze can come over the left side. Another breath or two here. Rinsing out the spine a little bit. On your inhale, draw the knees back to center. You can cross left leg over right if you took that on the other side. And then drop the knees over to the left side. Right shoulder roots onto the mat. And breathe here. On your next breath, rise back to center. You can uncross your legs, 
give yourself a final hug and either take a happy baby here, drawing your knees up to the side, using your hands on the bottom of your feet to draw your knees a little closer to the ground, rock side to side a little, maybe straighten and bend the legs, whatever feels good here to close off your practice. Or if you're craving any other postures, now is the time to take that option. And then we'll release our legs in front of, uh, just straight. You can let your heels splay out to the side. Or you just tuck your shoulders under, release your arms to your side or option to bring your left hand to your heart, right hand to your belly, and close your eyes. Moving into Shavasana, corpse pose. This final resting position is a very important posture. All the work that we've done throughout the last 55 minutes together is to bring us nice and steady and calm into this posture. So use the time that you have. If you're able to lay here five to 10 minutes, that is ideal. Just let your nervous system settle, let your breath settle. If you've had any engagement with the breath, you can just release and let your breath come back to normal. And just take a moment here to say thank you to yourself for taking the time to do something so important for your body and your mind. It really is a pleasure to get to guide you through your practice and I am working towards giving you the practice that you want. So if you do have any comments, um, if you're really craving a certain type of practice, please shout out to us, leave a comment. Thank you so much for practicing today and thank you for Brandon for being our demo. We'll see you next time.